All right, Tiger, what are you looking at? Well, uh, today's monologue, it's a little bit off the beaten path for me, but I've been so engrossed by this story, I cannot do my best to just share it all my favorite parts of it with you. The news broke Tuesday afternoon that the Justice Department in its largest asset seizure ever has recovered $4.5 billion in stolen Bitcoin and arrested two individuals on U.S. soils. So the Bitcoins were stolen in the year 2016 from an exchange called Bitfinex out of Hong Kong. And at the time, it was an approximately $70 million heist. Now, when you think about Bitcoin hackers, I'm sure you have the same image in your head as I do. Over Overweight dudes in the basement, neck beard, glowing keyboards, all of that. But what if I told you it was these two Brooklyn-ish hipsters posing in front of a tie-dye mural? Ilya Lichtenstein and his wife Heather Rhiannon Morgan are accused by the Department of Justice of helping launder approximately 120,000 Bitcoin worth $4.5 billion. And this isn't any old couple either. Mr. Lichtenstein is a dual Russian-American citizen who is actually an alumnus of Y Combinator, which is a prestigious startup accelerator in Silicon Valley. He's a tech entrepreneur who's even gotten funding in the past from Mark Cuban, but he is by no means the star in this relationship. No, 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 everyone. That honor belongs to Mr. Lichtenstein's wife, Heather Morgan, also known as a self-described surrealist artist and rapper, Razel Khan. Mm. Khan as an heir to Genghis Khan. <laughs> now, you may know her from this hit, Let's take a listen. Weirdest is most original. This song is for the entrepreneurs and hackers, all the misfits and smart slackers. What? Russell Kong, the first time she better win. Come real far, but don't know where I'm headed. Motherfucking crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. Always be a goat, not a goddamn sheep. Email me, fuck your message at the beep. Beep. of a revolutionary, power of a dictator, love to be contrary, but I'm fly like a gator. I've got pilot blood, I'm a real risk taker, pirate riding the flood, badass money maker, grandmother crocodile, weirder than an X-file, brief fire, ship silver, so sexy when I slither, sparkle on my little finger, hell of a razzle, ear to ear, poised to throw a zinger, playing on their worst fear. Russell Kong, the first song you better win, come real far, but don't know where I'm headed, motherfucking crocodile of Wall Street, silver on... Uh, Look, if uh, I had to listen to it, so did you. <laughs> Morgan also bills herself as a contributor to Forbes, where she's written very helpful tips for business owners, including this one. Experts share tips to protect their business from cyber criminals. <laughs> what people did not know, that was the true galaxy brain take, because she was an expert on laundering billions and billions of dollars. Try to normalize her obviously awful rapping, she even wrote a piece saying, quote, got burnout? This tech CEO thinks you should try <laughs> rapping. All of this is just a highlight. These were some grade A weirdos. So per Morgan's potential wedding photographer, she even wanted her engagement photos to include not only her husband and her, but her husband with the many iterations of her rap persona, requiring a lot of photo editing. <laughs> these are truly not sending their best hackers these days. In fact, even in the ways that they spent the money was hilarious. They bought NFTs and Walmart gift cards. They were apparently having a hell of a time trying to actually launder it all without tripping up fraud sensors among regulators. Obviously, they failed at that. But okay, let's get to the case itself. The most hilarious part of all of this, to, especially to people in the Bitcoin community, is how exactly the Justice Department got the Bitcoin in the first place. You see, I don't even have 0.01% as much Bitcoin as these people, and I take a lot more precaution with my private keys. Now, the keys being the only way that you can actually access your Bitcoin and transfer them. It turns out that the way the Justice Department got the key is because Mr. Lichtenstein was storage, storing them in his cloud storage account, like an iCloud. The keys were apparently so badly encrypted, it only took the government one day to crack the code, at which point they took all $4.5 billion worth of Bitcoin and transferred them to themselves in their own accounts in the largest asset seizure of all time. It is a crazy story, and there's obviously more to it. There's no way these two are the hackers because they weren't charged with that. They were just part of the laundering machine. So look, I'm sure there are so many other criminals out there, but just imagine sitting on all that money and you can't even spend it. 
It must have been truly a crazy six years while they lived with all of that on their chest. In terms of how exactly the criminals were caught, it's a very interesting look into Bitcoin and the blockchain itself. Per the criminal complaint, which I actually do encourage you all to read, the Fed spent nearly five years tracing the stolen Bitcoin through the Bitcoin ledger on the blockchain, which maintains a record that is forever recorded and cannot be manipulated to their eventual destinations. Now, the couple, as the Feds allege, routed all of these funds through thousands of different transactions to try and hide their tracks, including converting the currency to different types of crypto, opening up fake accounts with fake identities, all sorts of other crazy tricks. And the immutable blockchain itself, the ledger, is actually what allowed the Feds to slowly and surely trace each transaction and end up in the right destination. It's actually a fascinating proof of power of the blockchain with some lessons. As I already mentioned, if you have Bitcoin, don't store your keys in the cloud. If the feds can get them, so can malicious thieves like the people who stole these Bitcoins. But to me, as a believer in Bitcoin, as a hedge against the financial system and centralized control, it actually shows me how much centralized control still has an ungodly amount of power. The precise reason that these idiots weren't able to spend all their Bitcoin is because of all the identity protocols that the crypto exchanges in the US are required to abide by. Same with banking regulations, identity verification, even cash withdrawal. Look, obviously all of that is great when it's involved here with criminals, but when we're talking about the proposition of Bitcoin itself, it still shows that there's a long way to go. And it also shows the power of the man over something which shows promise, but is yet to come to fruition. I'll end with a prescient warning from a man nine years ago when he wrote on a forum, quote, the anarchists and the idealists will soon learn the decentralized nature of Bitcoin won't make a difference if anyone transmitting it is in violation of federal law. That's very well said and prescient indeed, because that man's name was Ilya Lichtenstein. And nine <laughs> years later, he was indicted for helping launder $4.6 billion in stolen Bitcoin. Whoa. How crazy wow. is that? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.